Welcome to Brussels, the capital of Belgium and the administrative centre of the European Union. In many ways, it's the capital of Europe. It's a cosmopolitan city, many different cultures come together. It boasts medieval streets, beautiful squares, boulevards, along with some impressive monuments and spacious parks. This city hosts the final meeting of the Samsung Diamond League for 2010. Welcome to the 34th Eva Van Damme meeting here in the Stade Roi Boudouin. 16 of the Diamond League overall winners were decided in Zurich. Tonight, we will know which athletes will be crowned champions and diamond winners in the remaining 16 events. The weather? Well, it's overcast. It promised rain, but uh, so far it's held off. And what a meeting we have in prospect for you. The men's 800 metres in particular. Well, David Radisha, the recent breaker of the world record for 800 metres. He's here against Kharki, what a matchup that will be. And it's a decider in the men's 100 meters too with Tyson Gay in great form, aiming to take that title too. Always in Brussels, the meeting promises an atmosphere which will provide a platform for performances of considerable quality across the board. This is the final, the diamond will be presented to the 16 winners, there they are already before this meeting gets underway. Well, alongside me, Tim Hutchings, um, and the first event on the tracks, the 400 meter hurdles. And uh, what a race that should be, Tim. Yes, there's the lineup for this uh, 400 meter hurdles. You can see the European champion, Di Green of Great Britain, goes in lane seven. But the Diamond League leader, well, he's uncatchable now. But Sean Jackson of the USA goes in lane five, outstanding world number one this year. He's won his last five races, all of them inside 48.12. He's in stunning form as the Little American. In the centre of the nine lanes being used tonight for a lot of the uh, lane races, 400 metres as well, for example. Not all nine lanes being used in this one. But in conditions, it has to be said, not really ideal. It's been a, a cloudy, relatively humid day today. Strange atmosphere, but 15 degrees means quite a drop in temperature tonight. Neil Stewart goes in lane one semi-finalist in those European Championships, but he has improved the Belgian by almost two seconds this year. Can he get under 50 seconds tonight? He's already very close. Sebastian Maillard, a former decathlete, he too was a semi-finalist in Barcelona. The Frenchman was uh, second in Lille just three days ago. The Trinidadian, Jehu Gordon, world junior champion this year, he was a huge talent. He was fourth in the World Championships last year, aged just 17. Javier Coulson goals in lane four for Puerto Rico. He's second in the Diamond League standings, but as explained, he cannot catch Jackson tonight. He is the World Championship silver medalist, though, from last year, so an upset is possible, if not likely. There is Jackson. Well, he's only five foot eight. He's one of the smallest in them, but he's the fastest in the world this year with 47.32. He's the US champion. And uh, in lane five, that's a good draw. Angelo Taylor. Well, this man is double Olympic champion. He won in Sydney all of ten years ago and then regained that title two years ago in Beijing. Very consistent, but not winning his races. Lots of seconds and thirds recently from Taylor. He's in lane six. There is Di Green, the UK champion for the last couple of years. And under the guidance of Malcolm Arnold, he's uh, come on in leaps and bounds this last couple of years. I was chatting to him on the bus on the way to the stadium. He said if he hadn't had a good season last year, he'd have had to take up a full-time job. Such were his finances. Well, as European champions, you can imagine they've turned around a little bit. Michael Pultiel goes in lane eight for uh, Belgium again. He too, a semi-finalist, couldn't make that uh, top eight at the European Championships, what, three weeks ago or so now? And then Justin Gaiman completes the lineup on the outside there. Winner in Lille on uh, Tuesday. Fourth in London. A couple of weeks prior to that. But to this man, Coulson, one lane inside Jackson. He goes in lane four, does the Puerto Rican. In good form with second places in Stockholm and London recently. And uh, this year. At 47.72, he is the third fastest in the world. But there is the world number one, Batman they call him, world champion back in 2005 when he was just 22 and then bronze medals in Beijing, bronze medal last year at the World Championships and what a season he's had. After the US Championships, he's uh, had a series of wins in Lausanne, Monaco, Stockholm and London. 
So that lineup again from the inside. Durink of Belgium in one. Maillard of France in two. Jehu Gordon of Trinidad three. Then Coulson of Puerto Rico four. Jackson the favourite in five. Angelo Taylor the Olympic champion in six. Di Green the European champion seven. Bultil in eight. Gaiman in lane nine. Away without any trouble and a quick start from Bushel Jackson is already up on the Angelo Taylor slightly. He's always very strong off the final barrier is Jackson. Now Taylor gets into his running down the back straight and he's already up alongside uh, Ty Green there, left of picture. Green third to left European champion. He's got some work to do but he's always strong in the second half. He's got to run his own race here. Taylor probably leading. He's run a very steady middle section. First on Jackson there, fit from left. Coulson in the headband there in the light green top. It's going well as the stagger unwinds now around the bend. He's run a good second bend. It's Di Green there. Third to left. He comes into the straight. Well, it's Jackson in the lead. Di Green's having a great run here. Coulson coming through in late four in the green, but it's Jackson leading and he's going away to win here. But Di Green for Great Britain's going to take some good scouts here. That's a great second place. 47.85 for the winner, Bergeron Jackson. He does indeed become Samsung Diamond League champion for this year. Di Green in second place. That's a lovely run. And Coulson coming through for third place. Angelo Taylor, despite that uh, aggressive back straight run and round the top bend, couldn't hold it down the home straight. But 47.85, anything under 48 seconds is really top-notch running. And on a cool, breezy night, Stuart, that's pretty classy. Yes, indeed. Di Green was right up here on Angelo Taylor at this stage of the race. And Bashawn Jackson, who often runs an even pace one, went quickly for the first bend. Taylor went away down the back straight. Di Green ran a great 300 and a superb straightway to hold his form into the finish ahead of Colson, who's a 47.72 man. But this fella is the man of the moment. He is the world number one. He is the diamond winner. And uh, he really showed that sort of form here, didn't he? Di Green's time, incidentally, there, 48.26, behind 47.85 of Bashawn Jackson. Well, the discus took place a little earlier. This is Li Yanfeng of China, the Chinese champion and former Asian champion. She took third place. It was her first round throw, incidentally, of 64 metres and 74. And she had three more throws over 60 metres in the series as a whole. But uh, third place for her. There it is, first round throw, and that was the best she could produce on the day. Well, Yarelis Barrios of Cuba was second on this occasion with her first round throw. It was a season's best, though, of 65 metres and 96, but with four previous wins, she won the Diamond Series. It was a superb performance all round on the series. But second place here, season's best, the wind absolutely perfect for discus throwing here. Powerful woman, terrific range, and there it is, 65.96. Well, last year, Sandra Berkovic was the European Junior Champion. This year, she's the European Senior Champion. She won this event with a personal best and a new national record. She's Croatian. It was 66 metres and 93, I can tell you. It was her third round throw. Very, very good performance. Just starts around the corner, but look at the wind and the torque she creates, and that's such a long pull on that discus. The right arm, the throwing arm, very active, but it stays so far behind so that when she unwinds, it's a powerful throw. Powerful throw. Well, there's the overall situation. 66.93, national record, 65.96 in second place. Berkovic in second place. Well, the women's high jump competition uh, well underway. This is the Rupetia of Spain at 1 meter 89. Just the uh, second athlete to go clear there. Skolina has got clear as well for uh, Russia. Blanka Vlasic, incidentally, hasn't yet attempted this height. She's got a clean card so far and is the outstanding leader in the Diamond League, by the way, in this discipline. 24, 24 points. The next closest person has uh, three points. That is indeed Betia. That's her card. 
Well, the shot put uh, competition finished a little earlier too. The Olympic champion Thomas Majewski was third. And what a performance it was, 21 metres and 44. It was the season's best. That came in the fifth round, as you can see. There's the series for you. All the very best in the world of competing throughout this season. Majewski has come up against this fellow. Now, Christian Campbell, in the last round, watch this. He'd had 21 metres and 02 in the fifth round. Then in the final round, he hit a real cracker. It was just short of 22 metres. And that was the celebration that he thought he'd done enough to win. He's the leader, though. He's the overall diamond leader. There's no question about that. He couldn't have been beaten on the night, but that's a meeting record of uh, 21.62. But I have to tell you, the meeting record didn't last long. Watch this. 21.40, Reese Hoffer. Hoffer, a terrific performer. Remember, the 207, 2007 world champion. Lovely turn, hit that brilliantly, and that was over 22 metres. 22 metres and 16 centimetres, and the meeting record had gone again. So what an end to this shot competition it was. Absolutely magnificent. Brilliant, brilliant performances. And that says it all. <laughs> Hopper looks across and smiles. Well, he might. There it is, 22-16. Christian Campbell, 21.62, the former meeting record holder. Then Majewski, 21.44, with the season's best in third. Well, back to this high jump, Antonietta Di Martino. One failure so far at 189 for the Italian. That's better. Yeah, much better. She becomes just the third athlete over at this height. I can tell you that uh, Vlasic now and Demigren of uh, Sweden both indicating that they're going to pass at this height. So Di Martino there with that clearance, the second attempt moves into third place. Relatively early stages, of course. As mentioned, uh, Vlasic cannot now be caught. Whatever happens here, Irina Gordieva. Well, she's in a spot of trouble with the Russian. Two failures already. Really does need this, or she's gone. Oh, no, no, no. All over the place. Didn't look comfortable at all there, did she? And that's uh, a little surprising. She's a 202 jumper at her best. And has jumped 197 this year. It's not like she's in particularly poor form. Having said that, she had failed to qualify for the World's, uh, for the European Championship final. Bershawn Jackson, the winner then, 47.85 in the 400 metre hurdles. Instead of Di Green, 48.26. Close to his best, the European champion, Coulson, in third. Eight points, four points, two points, of course, double points here at this uh, Diamond League final. Jackson, the very comfortable winner, ahead of Coulson and Green. Well, the next event on the track will be the women's 200 metres, and there is the lineup for you. Porsche Luskas of the United States drawn in one. Fedoriva of Russia in two. Knight of the United States in three. Briskina of the Ukraine in four. Felix, USA, five. Solomon, six. Baptiste, seven. Borle, eight. Moore, nine. This is uh, Porsche Lucas, twice collegiate champion in America, 22 49 at best. Fedoriva, the European bronze medalist this year, best of 22.41 this season. Well, there's Bianca Knight. She's been running pretty well this year. Got a best of the season of 22.59. And Brisgina. Well, her parents were both Olympic champions. She got the silver medal in the European Championships this year. Really enjoying this. And Alison Felix, already winner, diamond winner of the 400 metres, is already diamond winner of the 200 metres. The only athlete, really, to create a double in this uh, Diamond League inaugural season. Well, what an athlete. Solomon, Shalona Solomon, former world junior champion, 22.47, second in Stockholm this year. And then Kellyanne Baptiste of Trinidad, the Trinidadian record holder at all the sprint distances. She's better over 100, I have to say. Olivia Borle, what a family. The two brothers, the father coaches them. Three internationals in the family, and one of the brothers, the European 400 metres champion. And there's Connie Moore, 
right on the outside. Connie Moore, 22.40. Didn't do so well in uh, Stockholm, was seventh, and was seventh in her heat in London, so she's got a little bit to find. So, the women's 200 metres. Lucas, Federiva, Knight, Rizgina, Felix, Solomon, Baptiste, Borle, and more. Well, no problems with the start at all, and Felix has gone on very, very strongly indeed, as one would expect. Three from the outside is uh, Solomon going strongly too. And Alice and Felix now breaking into the straight and looking to put pressure on uh, ba Baptiste of Trinidad. And it's Solomon versus Felix again. And Felix is in the lead by a metre and a half. And here comes Solomon challenging, but Felix is so smooth. Felix gets it. Solomon in second place. And right over on the far side, that looked like Bianca Knight coming through to take third. And the time, 22.62. And the win, 0.4 metres per second behind. And Felix once again triumphs champion at 400 meters champion at 200 meters remember winner of women's record six world championship gold medals outdoors three at 200 three in the relays and what a 400 meter runner she is too tim well she's not getting it easy though is she she had to battle every stride of the way here great run from uh, shalonda solomon solomon there in lane six in the all black strip nearest us you can see Felix just staying half a metre ahead, but boy, there was no way she could have let up there. They got behind Solomon a couple of metres back to uh, third place, but uh, all credit to Alison Felix because she's holding her form so well. She's coming up against inspired rivals who are so determined to try and unseat her, but she turns back all challengers. Great run, and as you say, double Diamond League champion. Well, Emma Gren in this high jump, now at uh, 186, her best effort so far. Gren here goes at uh, 192, she has passed at 189. Just one athlete clear so far, and that, by the way, at 992 was Di Martino. Betia of Spain and Scalina of Russia have both failed. So for Gren, who's just had two jumps so far, the first a failure at 186, the second a clearance of that height, now goes 192. Don't forget that the Swede was the surprise a silver medalist at the European Championships. Oh no! That was close. She was the only athlete from a Nordic country to win a, a medal in Barcelona. She did so with personal best of 1 meter 99 and then 201 in Barcelona, but 192 beyond her just there. So still at the moment, just Martino clear. Vlasic next to go, and there she is. Well, this woman has totally and utterly dominated the high jump scene this season. She has already won the event, it's absolutely clear. The crowd enjoying this moment, the reigning world champion indoors and out. That little hiccup in uh, Beijing in 2008 where she was beaten but beaten with a non-winning mark of two metres and five. One ninety-two, not a problem. The tracksuit bottoms will come off later, I would think, although it is a bit chilly here, one has to say that. The grey clouds above, the rain holding off for the moment, thankfully. Another little look at that, very, very nice clearance. No Chantillot here, she's injured, she's back in America, she's given her a terrific performance over the year, over the year really, Chantillot, the American high jumper. Well, there it is, there's the series, three jumps, three successes, and she's in the lead. Well, back to this uh, high jump, Vlasic has gone clear now, and that's uh, Shalina. Moves into third place with that. That's her second attempt at 192. That's a, a little bit more like it from the Russian. 
Unlucky four for those European Championships and seems to be repeating that. Fourth in Stockholm and fourth in London since. Well, this is Beta. Ruth Beta of Spain, the Spanish record holder in Norzenal. Two metres this season, so she should get this. That was a very competent piece of approach. And much of this event depends on the approach, the positive approach, anything less than that, and uh, the timing is out. So, second attempt, 192. Emma Grun, now. She too needs this. Won't want to put herself under early pressure. The crowd really getting behind these jumpers, quite literally, of course. This is, uh, at this time of year, of course, a much in demand football arena. Hence those uh, barriers between the crowd and the athletes, but it doesn't stop the uh, proximity of the crowd to the athletes being very, very close. Now, Sweet, second attempt, 192. That's better. Lovely jump, too. She generates an awful lot of speed, does Gren, and the tough part is converting that speed into vertical lift. Good Europeans she had with a silver medal, and that was, that was a big, big move on. She said her personal best in a major championship, and that really gave her an awful lot of confidence. Lovely, lovely clearance. Yep, four athletes, indeed five athletes now clear. Vlasic, Di Martino, Betia, Scolina and Gren there. And they are the five left back in. Well, there's the result of the 200 metres for women. 22.61 for Felix, Solomon 22.70 and Knight 23.01. For Alison Felix, the overall champion. There's the points, 22 points to Solomon's eight. That's pretty impressive from Felix. She did it in the 400, she's done it here in the 200. Well, the athletes ready and stripped off for the next event on the track. It is the men's 400 metres. There is the lineup for this one lap race. It's not a Diamond League event, I hasten to add, but there's a very, very strong and significant Belgian presence in this race. Kevin Morley, of course, in lane four, is the European champion. And uh, his brother, Jonathan in lane six, the national record holder. More of that in a minute. In lane one, Edison Otto, third in Stockholm, fifth in Berlin in the last couple of weeks. He goes in one as the man for Dominica. Neri Brenes of uh, Costa Rica, second in Berlin in 45-4 earlier in the week, but he was fourth in the world indoors a couple of years ago. He's a 44-8 man at his best. Ben Offerheins goes in lane three for Australia. He is the Australian champion, bronze medalist at the Worlds last year in the long relay. He's in three. Then Kevin Borley. Well, he is the European champion. Listen to that roar. Understandably tired after Barcelona. He was only seventh in London, then third in Berlin. But in uh, Barcelona, he moved from fifth to first in the last 50 metres. What a run he had there. David Neville, the Olympic bronze medalist. Poor form recently with an eighth in Paris and a seventh in Monaco, although that was six weeks ago. Has he freshened up now, the American? He's in five. Jonathan Borley, well, he's the national record holder, supposedly the better of the two twins, the two Borley identical twins, but he finished the lowly seventh in Barcelona, succumbing to a lot of strong finishing down the home straight. Fifth in Zurich last week. Aladin Fothergill. Third in the Jamaican Championships. And uh, a man who is knocking on the door at 45 second territory, 45 2 this year. Listen to this roar. The Belgium, Cedric van Brandegen, the former national record holder before the Borley brothers came on the scene. He's a man who has helped Belgium to medal after medal in major relays at big championships. Much light, but this is his last race, his retirement race. And uh, at the age of 31, some might think perhaps he could go on a bit longer, but we understand he has been carrying a lot of injuries of late. And uh, this retirement will be a very, very special moment for Cedric van Brandtigen. Well, lane nine, as uh, Jamal Torrance, he's a late uh, addition to the field, the American. 
as mentioned earlier, all nine lanes being used. It's season's best 44 8. Third in the US Championships over the summer, which is no mean feat in itself. And indeed, third at the World Indoors in Doha back in March. So, a good athlete, Torrance. Not a great lane draw for him, I have to say. But Kevin Borley in lane four. I'm assuming that's Kevin, actually. <laughs> if we can see his number, it's got Kevin on it, apparently. And Jonathan Ball is uh, in lane six, a couple of lanes outside, and he's got Jonathan on his uh, number, just to help us a little bit. But when they don't show the number, we're guessing. That lineup again, Otto of Dominica in one, Brenners of Costa Rica in two, Offerines of Australia three, then Kevin Borley, the European champion in four, David Nell of Amer Neville of America five, Jonathan Borley in six, Fothergill seven, Van Brandsgem in eight, and Jamal Torrance in lane nine. Jeremy Warner, already the champion. <laughs> and away they go. Nobody really showing around the uh, first bench. And indeed, very even down the back straight, as you can see. If anything, Brenner's pats in lane two, doing some hard running. They're making up the ground on Offerines. But watch Kevin Borley in lane four. Round the crown of the bend. It is Kevin Borley now in lane four. In the blue, an inspired run this round the second bend. Outside him, Neville's going to be a tough man to beat. Look at lane two, that's Brenners of Costa Rica. Brenners leading at the moment, a good running too. Out in lane nine from Torrance, but now they come through. But it's Brenners who's undeniable, undeniably the victor. Three metres to the good there. In lane six coming through was Jonathan Borley. A little bit of consolation there for the result in Barcelona when he was way outside the medals. 44.93 there for Brenners. Well, that's only a click outside his personal best said earlier on this summer. And he's taken some big scalps there as the Costa Rican. What a good run. Much quicker than he ran in Berlin three days ago. That was a 45.4 for second place in the Olympic Stadium. But that's a fabulous run from lane two. He did go out possibly the hardest, Stuart. I discounted him, I have to say, in the early stages and thought the big names in range four, five, six would come through, but it wasn't to be. No, it was very even for the first 200 metres. The, all the action occurred between uh, 300 and 400. But Bren had run a very, very good race to 300 and really strong in the home straight. And in fact, it's the Belgian record-holding Jonathan Borla who comes through. They both held the 400 metre record. Um, but my goodness me, this fella didn't half come away from the final stages. He was second in the Berlin race recently, not a Diamond League race, of course, but uh, showed some real form there. And uh, Kevin Borley didn't quite have the finish that he wanted, but this fella did. But what a family. All three internationals. And there is uh, Van Brandigan. As Tim was saying, this is his last race. He retires here. And frankly, Stu, the, uh, the Belgian relay team have performed above themselves in recent years, haven't they, as a unit? They're uh, more powerful than the individual parts would suggest. A bit like the Poles, they perform well as a squad. Brand Brandtgen, if you like, passing on the baton there from uh, his era to the Borley brothers, both just 22. So the high jump bar now at 1 meter 95. Lasic. Emma Gren has cleared this height. Vlasic now. If she clears it, goes back into the lead by virtue of the fact that uh, Gren took two attempts at 192. So the competition now beginning to hot up. Two clear. Three failures thus far, De Martino, Beter and Scolina. Lovely jump. Stepped out of my door this morning in the hotel into the corridor and she was sprinting past me. Almost had a collision. It's an early morning warm-up, I think, for the uh, Croat, who next week will be performing in front of home crowds twice, of course, in uh, Zagreb on Wednesday, and then split over the weekend at the Continental Cup. Now, the uh, triple jump was earlier on. Third place taken by uh, Olga Saladua, the European champion, producing 14 metres 38 in the third round. That gave her third place. Second place went to the Diamond League leader, 
Yagele Savigny of Cuba. This coming in round two, 14 metres 56. She was unbeaten last year. She's uh, been beaten on one or two occasions this year. And tonight by this athlete, Olga Riparkova of uh, Kazakhstan, the world indoor champion. Bit of an upset that back in March. She was second in the Diamond League standings coming into tonight. 14 metres 80 there in round three. Good enough for the victory tonight and a defeat of Savigny. But she ended up on 18 points alongside the uh, Cuban in the overall standings. There's tonight's result. Riparkova at 14.80 to defeat the Cubans, 14.56. Saladuka, 14.38, European champion, back in third place. But in terms of the way the points uh, ended up in this discipline, and there were only four rounds, don't let's forget. Well, 18 points each. Or, or rather 22 points each for Riparkova and Savigny, but the Cuban out on top because of the win-loss record. Well, Peter then in the high jump. Second attempt now at 1 meter 95. Di Martino's had two failures at this height, but only two clear, just to update you. Uh, Vlasic and Glenn, the only two clear. No, 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 drifted. The approach was totally wrong. She took off too far away from the bar and just went straight through it as you saw that's two failures and she's put the pressure on herself now she really did look better than that Gordieva at uh, Shilona Scalina let me get that right and here is Scalina well you can see the position she finds herself in if she wants to stay in the competition she's down in fifth place one of three athletes, though, at the moment, with two failures. Only Vlasic and Gren have gone clear, both of them first time. So the European under-23 champion of a couple of years ago. Fourth in those European championships. Desperately needs this. Third time, 1 metre 95. No. And it is getting close to her limits, to be fair. She's a 198 jump at her absolute best. She's done that in each of the last three seasons, including this year. But tonight, well, it is cool, 15 degrees an hour or so ago, maybe even below that. We're all sitting here with a couple of layers on. Confirmation of that win for Brenners of Costa Rica, a national record, no less, 44.92. Although my stats say he ran faster earlier on this year. Borley in second, Jonathan Borley, and Fothergill in third. <laughs> Well, this is a loaded uh, 800 meters final, it certainly is. Bernard Thomas, Luca, Jenny Meadows of Great Britain, Anna Pierce, better known as Anna Willard, of course, uh, Kusma, uh, Johnson, the American who's been running well, uh, Jeb Goskai, Savinova, Simpson, and then Kasta Semenya of South Africa. Semenya, well, more about her in a moment, the pace from Karen Shinkins right on the outside. Semenya, we'll talk about in a moment. Luca of India, best of 2 0 one, She goes right on the inside, sharing a lane with uh, Nisha Bernard Thomas. Uh, Bernard Thomas, 29 now, semi finalist in the Olympics, 159 60 this season. Jenny Meadows, world indoor silver medalist this year, bronze in the world outdoors last year, Olympic semi finalist. She is now a world class 800 meter runner. Anna Pierce on the left. Oh, let's go to Kuzma first. And he's Kuzma, the Italian Mediterranean Games champion at 8 and 15 last year, 159 13 this season. Well, there's Anna Pierce, Olympic steeplechase finalist, fourth in the World Indoor Championships in the 800 meters. This is uh, Halmi Hachaf of uh, Morocco, one in Rome, broke uh, two minutes point six to 158.40. Now this is uh, Johnson, Alisa Johnson, World Indoor Bronze Medalist. Very, very good season thus far. Jeb Koskai, the leader in this uh, diamond competition thus far. Nine points. Savinova, three successive goals. European, world indoor and European. So she's got some class. Gemma Simpson, 
gaining in stature. A Britain with a time of 1.58.74. Coach, coached by Mark Rowland, he's here. And this is Casta Semenya. Controversial, yes, she's 19, a gender issue, has blighted her career thus far. But she has the blessing of the international governing body now and returns to competition. Karen Shinkins, right on the outside, will provide the pace. They're looking for something like 57 and a half at 400 meters. But this is a race in which anything can happen. But certainly, this is a big race. A quality race. That's Johnson, the American. A bit of a rush for the first bend, as always, until they sort themselves out in the uh, back straight. We'll see who's going to take over. Uh, well, Johnson actually in second place. The Indian right on the inside is uh, Tintu Luka. She's gone into the lead at this stage, right behind Shinkins. Johnson is there as well. Uh, Jeff Koskai in uh, fourth place. And then the European champion, Safinova. Tim, much promised here. Well, it's a fabulous field, this. I'm just watching Semenya. She's gone off the slowest of all of them, right at the back after about 250 metres. She's now beginning to move up around the outside. She looks very heavy, Stuart, I have to say. There she is, right at the back in the all-black Semenya. Massively powerful figure compared with the rest of them. But she's got a lot of work to do. She's 15 metres off the front. And Alicia Johnson has to be watched. 56-1-2. It's quick. Yes, it is very quick indeed. And Schenkins has done well. And the rest are following too. Johnson, the American, had an indifferent race uh, in London, didn't she? Uh, but now, uh, showing some form. Now the race is on with about just under 300 metres to go. Chepkoska is in third place. The European champion, Savinova, now moving up into fourth place. And right on the inside uh, is Bernard Thomas. She's up there too. Where's Semenya? Semenya's moving up, but she's about what, 10, 12, 15 metres off the lead at the moment. And this lead by Luca of India at the moment as they come into the straight. Johnson attacks. So does Jeff Koskai. Jepkoski, and here comes the European champion, Semenya, and Semenya is coming wide on the outside. Semenya now making her attack as they come into the straight, but Jepkoski is going to take this one. Jepkoski, a great run from her. She's the champion, and she's proving it here. Semenya is coming through to set third place behind the European champion, uh, Savinova, and the time, 158.82, and it was a strange run from... Uh, uh, Semenya, Tim, I have to say, but uh, really, this young woman could well smile because that was a superb tactical run for her, and everyone is so pleased for her. Well, more of that 800 in a minute. Emma Gren now in this high jump, which is uh, reaching its climax, if you'll forgive the pun. Gren now with a bar at 1 meter 98. She's lying in second place. This will be her first attempt. Three athletes left in the competition. Di Martino, the Italian third. She's had one failure at this height. Vlasic yet to go. Can Gren take the lead? No. Not a bad attempt. Pretty close, that. But gave it a bit of a clatter. And Vlasic will be next to go, and frankly, it might well be the winning jump. It's a cool night. Two metres would be very, very strong in these conditions. There's Gren's card. She's uh, secured a spot in the top three. Good win, that, though, from uh, Jeb Koskai Stewart. She's always been a very astute tactical runner. Has Jeb Koskai. She's fresh from a personal best over 1,500 metres in Zurich uh, eight days ago. And she looks very, very smooth, doesn't she? And Semenya there in the black, moving through into fourth place, just easing past Jenny Meadows. She towers over Jenny Meadows. And Alicia Johnson, who dies badly, getting into third place, Semenya. But she ran a very, very naive race. And Jeb Koska there going away and winning pretty comfortably. Look, she doesn't look too overstressed by that, does she? Luck of losses. First attempt at 1 metre 98. Let's just have a look at the overall situation now. De Martineau cleared 195 on the third attempt to join Gren, who cleared 195 on the first attempt, and of course Vlasic here. Uh, Gren and Di Martineau have both failed at 198, and so this is Blanca Vlasic's opportunity. There's Gren. Vlasic now to go into the lead. The tracksuit bottoms have been uh, 
thrown away for the moment. It's the serious, the business end of the high jump competition now. Very wide approach, rangy approach. And then she hits the deck and gets that inside knee driving high, creating the arch in the back. And then throws those calves away. No, no, no. Well, now that's interesting. She certainly still leads because uh, she's had fewer failures than Gren. Gren is in second place. Well, Vlasic uh, knows what she did wrong there. Clipped it with her left shoulder, in fact, I think, as she went over. The height is certainly there. She doesn't really look too annoyed with the summer. I think she knows it'll come next effort. But it's one of two vertical jumps on in the field at the moment. As she gets advice there from coach. Her first failure of the evening. There he is, Steve Hooker, the Olympic and world champion. He's had a really, really topsy-turvy season. One failure at 5.65 so far for Hooker. Oh, oh, the momentum he generates, absolutely massive. He came in at 5.35, passed the next two heights, and then pops over 5.65. But at the second attempt, Ice Twan, that puts him in third place at the moment. He really has, by his standards, had a pretty inconsistent season. Seemed to have a few hiccups early on, and then a 580 at Lausanne made you think he'd got things on track. But he's had a lot of inconsistency since then. Di Martino. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Second attempt at 198 gets it. And that puts her in the lead. Now then, with Vlasic with one failure and Emma Gren with one failure, it puts the pressure back on them, but that's a very good clearance. Di Martino is a good athlete, best of two metres this season. She shared the silver medal in the World Championships in Osaka. She was getting better as they approached the Berlin meeting recently. She got second there. She was fourth in Rome. Now then, Emma Gren, what can you do? She needs this crowd because that's the reason. Second attempt, 198. Can she join De Martino? It was close, it was close. The pressure now on. Vlasic will be next. The second attempt at 1 meter 98. A height she's achieved so many times. The Gren's best of the season, 201. Now then, Blanca Vlasic. What are you made of? She is a champion. Now then, second attempt. Second place at the moment. This clearance would take her into the lead. The rehearsal, the eyes will trace the approach. Gren can't even watch. rehearsal almost complete De Martino yes 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 she goes back into the lead <laughs> a little smile what have we got to do to beat her very, very fine competitor. Had a long Olympic season, you know, and uh, she looked tired in the Olympic Games, although uh, she did achieve 205, but lost the medal. She's won pretty well everything else. Well, there's the lineup. 
the next event on the track, the men's 100 metres, the blue ribbon event, and the world number one goes in lane five. Tyson Gray leads the Diamond League standings, and a man who has defeated both uh, Asaf Abou and Usain Bolt this year. Both of them have hung up their spikes this season. Mario Forsyth of Jamaica goes in lane one. He was second in Berlin earlier in the week in 10.11. Very close to his personal best. Marshall Van Dock goes in lane two. The Frenchman with the European bronze medals, both 100 and 200 metres, and then took gold in the sprint relay in Barcelona. What a year he's had. He's only the French number two, of course, although Lamentre doesn't run here. Daniel Bailey, fourth in the World Championships last year, the Antiguan, also coached by Glenn Mills. He's been injured, hasn't raced for seven weeks, Bailey. Johan Blake is the real find of this year. He ran Tyson Gay very close in London, what, uh, two or three weeks ago. He too, one of that Glenn Mills squad, and a lot of personal bests recently, over 200 metres and 100. And there is Tyson Gay, the undisputed world number one this year. Beat Bolt in Stockholm a fortnight ago. He has the world best of 9.78, and that was in a chilly London. Not much different to conditions here tonight in Brussels. He's in five. Well, Tyson Gay. Winner in Zurich in a, a sprint relay, just a display event, frankly. Nesta Carter goes in uh, lane six. Carter, the Jamaican, is an Olympic champion in the 4x100 metres. Beside him, Richard uh, Thompson, who also has eight points in the Diamond League. So if either Gay or Thompson win in, here in Brussels, they can take the Diamond Trophy. If they're second or worse, then they can be overtaken by Blake. Trill Kimmons, huge personal best at Zurich, moved down to 9.95, and then the Jamaican Dexter Lee goes in at lane 9. Big talent, this youngster, just 19 years old, double world junior champion. He won the title in 2008, and then for good measure won it in Moncton, Canada, just a couple of weeks ago. I should say he retained it in Canada two weeks ago, Dexter Lee. So the Jamaican production line continues. Their youngster, perhaps their future in lane 9, but the current world number one, Tyson Gay, there he is. Has that little ritual of a couple of sips of water and his arms up in the air like that before every start. He is the second fastest man in history. Remember that 9.69 from the World Championship final last year. 9.78 this year makes him quicker than Bolt and Powell. The lineup from the far side again. Forsyth of Jamaica in one, Banjok of France two, Bailey of Antigua three, then Blake of Jamaica in four. Watch Blake. Gay is in five, Carter six, Thompson seven, Kimmons in eight, Lee in lane nine. Gay in five, right in the middle in that green. Seven. Well, there's a bit of a twitch there, and I tell you what, I think it might have been uh, Tyson Gay. I hope, I really hope it wasn't. But I think Gay Twitch, now, I was watching him, I have to own up. Most of my attention was on Gay, not on the other eight. But if you saw somebody else twitch, then it... Oops, I missed it. Watch again. Impossible it, to see from that angle, it, Stuart. Yeah, it is, but you, you may be right, but who's brave enough? It's a green card. It's a green card. And the green card means <laughs> that it's a technical offence and it doesn't go against any one athlete. Ah, well. <laughs> so, there you go. Well, Tyson Gay then lives again. Little flinch. I have a feeling it uh, looked like him. It really did. Well, I'm just but, looking uh, at the timing, Stuart, on the computer, and they're saying Gay was punt point one five one. A couple of athletes were quicker than him, actually. Carter and Thompson, lane six and seven to his right. <laughs> well, just up the ante a little bit. Well, I tell you what, only the strong of mind will prevail in races of this kind when you you settle down. It's those that have the experience who will be able to handle this sort of situation. It's not a championship, of course, but it is a big race and some very, very quick athletes here. Blake, quite some talent. He goes in lane four, the youngster. Remember, 19.78 in Monaco, what, a month or so back from 2060, and then second in London to... Uh, Gay. Here we go again. Forsyth in one, Banjok two, Bailey in three, then Blake of Jamaica in four, the youngster. Can he cause an upset to Tyson Gay who's in five, Carter in six, Thompson seven, Kimmons eight, Lee in lane nine, there's the camera. Six. 
set. Good this time, although Gay was sitting in the blocks a bit. Much better start from Carter. Carter leading the moment. Gay's got some work to do. Blake coming through now in the yellow, but Gay, Gay's going to take it. Good run there from Carter to get second place out of Blake. 979, look. Plus 0.1, it's in almost still air. And 9.79 is quicker once again than either Asaf and Powell or uh, Usain Bolt have run this year. It's just one one hundredth away from his world's quickest time of 2010. But he had to work for it, didn't he? He had, didn't have a particularly good start. He was left in the blocks a fair old bit. Maybe it was emphasised by the very good start of Jamaica's Nesta Carter in lane six beside him. But I tell you what, Tyson Gay there, boy, did he finish strongly. We'll have a look at the start. Can't tell much from that, but I tell you what, um, that was Nesta Carter's start, and he held that position, and he really had to work. Just tied up a little bit there, and if anything, uh, Tyson Gay was easing down in the end uh, with uh, Jan Blake of Jamaica coming through as well. It went pretty well to the script, but uh, my goodness me, uh, Nesta Carter won the race in Berlin recently, got a best of 9.86, and now, of course, uh, maybe closer than that here, but what a good race that was. Di Martino. And that uh, bar now at two meters. I don't know whether we'll get a chance to look back at what happened, but all three athletes cleared uh, 198. Vlasic on her second attempt. Di Martino on her second attempt. And Emma Gren recovered after two failures to get a third clearance. Well, well just, there it is again. Sorry, Stu. Yeah, just having a look at the contrast between these two. Look at the tension on Carter's face as he senses Tyson Gay coming up alongside and then going past him. That one breath in 100 metres, it's all what they call anaerobic stuff. Carter has run a personal best, all credit to him. 985, worked hard for it. You wouldn't exactly say that Gay was relaxed there through the last few strides, would you, in the head and shoulders? But doesn't matter he's won very very fast 979 well I mentioned that Emma Glenn had uh, cleared uh, 198 on a third attempt and here she is attempting two meters that's one centimeter below her personal best was close as well a little bit of a drift at the end didn't quite get the cards out of the way but uh, this talented young woman has come with such confidence from the European Championships there look at that that third time clearance at 198 that 98 that shows real class 9.79 for Tyson Gay in that 100 meters, then just two 100 meters of a second of Usain Bolt's meeting record. Nesta Carter, new territory, 9.85, Johan Blake in third, also under 10 seconds. 8.42, the points for those three. Tyson Gay does indeed win the Diamond League ahead of Richard Thompson and Blake. Well, the yeah, sky there suggesting it's a lovely evening, but it's pretty cool. Well, there's an update on the result of the women's 800 meters. Chip Koskai, 158.82. Sabinova, 159.49. And Semenova in uh, third place. And there you've got uh, Gemma Simpson, 201.13 for British viewers. Very, very good race, that 800 meters. Well, I was fascinated to see uh, Semenova, I must admit, Stuart. Continues on the track, doesn't it? Non-stop. Well, the 3,000 metre steeplechase for women as uh, part of the lineup. We'll introduce them as we go along the line. Rotic and Chewa and Hyman is the pacemaker, but uh, Milka Chemos Chewa is the overall winner. She's the diamond uh, winner already going into this race. A safer is uh, next to Rotic. There's Chewa on the left. Rotic been performing very well, third in the Kenyan Championships and the World Championship trials over there. Asefa, the African silver medalist this year, 9.22.09 her best. Lydia Rotic, just no mention of her, She's third in those African championships, third in Stockholm, just to give you some idea, third in London. And there's the Diamond Race uh, winner, she's already done the job thus far. And after only running a first steeplechase in April 2009, then goes on and uh, wins 
a bronze medal in the World Championships just a few months later. It's extraordinary, really, what uh, can happen in this uh, sport of ours. Aguila of the United States, Ayana of Ethiopia. Well, when you look at uh, Asefa and Rotic and Chewa, you'll see that uh, there's Chewa. You'll see that there is a real development of this event. It's the first time the women's steeplechase has been part of the Vandama meeting here. So a little bit of athletics history here. And we shall see, they're looking at uh, just, uh, just outside, well, what, about 3.05 for the first uh, kilometre, which is about 9.15 pace, if on even pace. It doesn't always work like that, of course. And uh, Andrew Hyman, the Jamaican, who's now gone into the lead, will uh, set the pace for it and Chewa looks as though she's gone uh, immediately into uh, the lead with Rotic well the lead she's in second as, we, as, as they run now with Rotic uh, behind her then a Sefa and uh, then Aguila Adamu Iana Hines they're all there and the high jump to Martino yes it is indeed just uh, checking the positions here. Di Martino taking a pop there. Oh, that's close. Good effort. But uh, second time failure at two meters for Di Martino. Gren and Vlasic have had just one attempt each. The Italian who took the lead with that uh, second time clearance at 198 before Vlasic then did the same. Back in third. Well, we'll get um, the split on the first thousand uh, meters of this uh, 3,000 steeplechase when we can. No change at the moment. Chewa leading. Uh, the pacemaker, of course, Hyman is leading, but uh, in the race proper, it's uh, Chewa. Rotic is tucked in on the inside as they come off the bend into the home straight. Adamu is there. Ayana. Bakele. So oh. Gren, Gren failing on that one. And that actually wasn't a very good attempt at all. Well, Gren actually, I think I did her injustice just now. Di Martino is in second place. Gren is in third. Second failure for her. Uh, she knows what she needs to do, but this is a tough call for her. This uh, height she cleared in Barcelona as a new personal best. She's only done it the once. Well, there you've got it. Hyman still uh, taking the pace through. It's a pretty reasonable pace. This event is developing very, very fast indeed. Che was best uh, this season, 9-11-71. And she's proved herself uh, time and time again. They are beginning to string out now, as you can see. Just waiting to get the first split. Just look at the difference in techniques as they take those barriers. Well, it's a relatively small field, this, isn't it? And, uh, to run anywhere near... Uh, nine minutes they've got to go considerably faster than this I don't think they're on schedule as yet Vlasic though is she on schedule for a win here tonight second attempt at two meters for her she is in the lead on count back from Di Martino and Gren that's better yeah this gave it a little flick might have been with the back of her cards but that might well be the winning jump in a way I'm not sure to Martino or Gren will really be up for this now. Whatever happens, even if they do clear this at the third time, they can't win. They need to clear the next side, 202, and that would be personal best territory for the pair of them. Where does she scrape it? Back of her thighs just gives her the gentlest of nudges. But that's good jumping on the, in this damp, cool evening. You can see how pleased Di Martino is to see her go over. <laughs> Clapping politely, I think we could say. But normal service is being maintained. Well, the first kilometre, 3.39, so just inside 3.4. So they're pretty well on schedule. So Hyman did a pretty good job on that uh, pace-making early on. 
It may well have slowed a little bit. It's very difficult to see, but Chewa, a safer, is there. You can see them for yourselves. But Kaylee, the tall figure with the orange strip, with four laps to go in this 3,000 meter steeplechase. Well, 302 for that first kilometre is healthy running, has to be said. And they look up for it, don't they? Although there's a bit of bunching there, and this tends to happen if the pacemaker drops out early. It would be so nice if the pacemaker, Hyman, who's uh, done a good job throughout this last couple of summers, but if she'd been able to hang in there till even, say, halfway, then it would have uh, assisted these athletes through that crucial middle section. Di Martino, then. Now... She is capable of this, the Italian. It's not beyond her. She uh, clears this. She can solidify her second place, if you like. No. No, she's a 203 jumper, actually. That was uh, three years ago. She's the shortest of world-class jumpers. It has to be said at 1 meter 69. She has the best differential, the world's, world's best differential of 34 centimeters. That's uh, between her own height and the height she can clear. Nice hug there from Betia, who has finished in fourth place. Well, I think the fact that they're bunching is evidence that there has been a little bit of a drop-off in the pace in that uh, second kilometer. Our uh, Chewa out in front, just slowing it down and uh, setting up the uh, tenor of the race. We'll get a time for 2,000 metres, but I sense that it's slowed just a little bit now, as Rotic is on the inside in the lead now. Uh, Chewa right on the outside. A Sefer is there, so is Bekele. And uh, just look at the way they prepare to go in. It's very difficult to dig into those barriers. It's now being pushed along a little bit now. I think Che was putting a little bit of pressure on at this moment. Well, but that, with that first kilometre of 3.02, Stuart, you'd be looking at 6.04, obviously, for a maintaining of tempo. And uh, I think it's considerably slower than that. 6.16 at two kilometres. There's a Glenn now. Just this jump could deny victory to... Uh, Blanka Vlasic, and even then, surely the Croat could go higher if required. Third and final attempt for the Swede. Her summer completed with that wonderful silver in Barcelona. No. Looked to me like she took off too far from the bar. It does confirm Vlasic as the winner tonight. And we already knew that she was outstanding leader and champion of this discipline in the Samson Diamond League. Lemma Glenn has had a wonderful summer. Can't take anything away from her. 1 meter 98 tonight at the third attempt. Gives her third place. Di Martino second. And Blanca Vlasic the winner. Will she jump on? I'm sure she will. The bar at 202. I wonder if she'll push it up a little bit further. The meeting record, incidentally, is 204 by Costa Zinova. That might be something Vlasic could look at. And as I say that, so the computer in front of us switches to 204. That's what she's going at. Well, this has now developed into a race with the second kilometre at 313, so it dropped off as we thought it was. And uh, all of the athletes who uh, we expected to be there are there. But che was running this as a race. You can't blame her. She's won the title thus far. She is the African champion. She's got the pedigree. But Rotic is giving her a good race as they come into the uh, home straight. And when they come down to the straight, it'd be a lap to go. Rotic leads. Chewa is there. Asafa is there. Bekele is there. Aguila and Ayana. That's the group as they come down with uh, just over, what, about 30 or 40 metres and one lap to go. Just looking at the clock there with a lap to go. 8.12 at 2,600. And now this is definitely a race. Now then. Chewa will want to... Uh, win this race just to underline her win of this uh, Diamond League event but it's not going to be easy as Safa is going very well too as they go into the back straight now Safa the African silver medalist so she knows uh, Chewa very well Ayana looking good too on the outside Ayana running very very strongly Safa and Ayana these two at the moment as they go with just over 200 meters to go well, Chewa looks to have dropped off the back of that group now, and uh, she's not going to prevail in this one. Asafa then coming into the uh, water jump, and uh, oh, and she gets away from the water jump brilliantly there. She really does with Iana in second place. Chewa now coming into third place with Bekele in fourth. 
see what happens at the final barrier. She actually stepped on it. They all did, and here comes Chewa into second place. Asef is going to take this, and this is going to be a real run for the second place. It's uh, Asefa gets uh, the lead. Then Ayana and Chewa and Ayana. Those three then, and uh, the African silver medalist beats the African champion. But uh, Michaela Chewa is the overall winner. 9.20.72, that second kilometre denied them and it uh, really gave us a race, a, a real run race in the end. Well, it was a close race than we might have expected. You're right, Stuart, that uh, middle kilometre, I mean, it was about 3.14. After a 3.02, it was incredibly slow and it allowed this field to bunch going to the last couple of laps. A safer there. Oh, she's a funny old shape, isn't she? I have to say, she looks like she's carrying a few pounds extra, and yet she's running superbly well there, is a safer. The Ethiopian, just 22, taking a few scalps there. I don't know whether a Chewa absolutely exhausted herself there. She has this discipline wrapped up in the Diamond League. She has the world's fastest time at 9.11. She's come through there for second place in 9.22. So she had plenty left in the tank, if you like. But let's take nothing away from that win of a safer. You can only turn up and beat the athletes uh, in the race with you. And how much effort they put in is entirely up to them. Blanca Blasic then passes at 2.02, goes to 2.04 in this high jump competition. He's won the competition from Di Martino in second place and Emma Glenn in third. The second and third decided on failures. And the crowd now, a capacity crowd for the 12th consecutive year, we're told. And they're getting involved. There's been a great atmosphere, 47,000 packed in here. Uh, two more attempts at this new height. She's had quite a few attempts at the world record, incidentally, over the last uh, couple of seasons or so. Uh, world record standing at 2.09, Konstantinova, all those years ago. Well, the next event's on the track is the 1500 metres, but confirmation of that results the women's secret chess are set for a season's best of 9.20 ahead of uh, Chewa with Ayana in third place. A world junior record for Almaz Ayana there in third. Well, there are the rest. Well, that's a good shot, isn't it, of this uh, stadium here. Refurbished in 1998. They say it's rebuilt. Well, this arena is one of the great cathedrals of middle and long distance running, and here is the metric mile lineup. And what a field it is, too. Everything to run for here in the Diamond League standings. The leader is Asbel Kiprop, who is, of course, the Olympic champion, took gold at the age of 19, belatedly after the disqualification of Rashid Ramsey for a doping offence. But so close in his heels is Augustin Choge, who is in second place with 11 points. More of that in a minute. That's Christoph van Malderen. The uh, Belgium went out the heats of those European Championships over on the far side. Well, there's Casado. What a season the Spaniard has. European champion in Barcelona in front of a home crowd. 51.9 is last lap in that Olympic Stadium in Barcelona. Gebra Medin, well, a national record possible tonight. He's been very consistent the Ethiopian. He's looking for 331.13 to get that national record that stretches back six years. Asbel Kiprop, there he is. Olympic champion, fourth last year after bad tactics in the World Championships in Berlin, but he leads the Diamond League from this man, Augustin Choge. 14 points to Kiprop, 11 points to Choge. Remember, eight points for a win, four points for second. So Choge could catch him here tonight if he was second, if uh, Choge were the winner here tonight and Kiprop finished behind him. Choge, 
bit of a mystery man to me. He ran 12.53 for 5,000 at the age of 18, but he's pursued or persisted in a 1,500 career, which has resulted in non-medal performances in major championships over the last couple of years. He was ninth in the Olympics, fifth in Berlin last year at 1,500. Away they go. Now we're looking for around 220 at 1,000 metres. That means around 152 at 800 metres. There are no less than three pacemakers here tonight. Kronje of South Africa, Krumanaka of the USA. First of all, it should be Victor Seco of uh, Spain who leads them round. He's a training partner of Casado. Casado there slotting into what about a 10th place 12th place in this uh, pretty big field 18 starters I think it's a little bit too big if you ask me but watch two for the American Lionel Manzano fresh from a 144 personal best at 800 meters that was in Berlin just three days ago also in this field Tom Langshire of Great Britain looking to broach new territory still running well 334 for seventh in Berlin now, they come round, it's Krumenacker in the lead, and at uh, 400 metres, 54.37 for Krumenacker. The main body of the field, the main protagonist will have gone through in around 56. So that's probably pretty good pace making, Stu. Yeah, I think so. But the tall figure of uh, Asbel Kimbrop, the Kenyan, the African champion, is only 21. You can see him in about fifth or sixth place. He's up down there with Augustine Choke, who Tim has mentioned already, uh, the diminutive figure in comparison. And uh, this race will unfold, and you're right, it was a big field, but they spread out very, very quickly indeed. And if the pace continues good, well, then of course they will continue to be spread out. But if it punches, then there could be a little bit of a problem for one or two. But Krumanaka, the pacemaker, is leading at the moment. Uh, they go through 700 metres, two laps to run. It's Krumanaka from Seco. Krumanaka was supposed to be the second pacemaker. Seco the first. It would appear that the Spaniard blew there in second place, couldn't get to the front. But Choge is there in fourth. Kiprop in the black on the inside. Also there is uh, Chep Seba, who is uh, little known, fifth in the Kenyan trials. He ran 3.36 for second place in Lille earlier in the week. But they're all still there. The German is still there as well, the man who surprised with that uh, Schlangen, with that silver medal at the European Championships. He's in the yellow in about ninth or tenth place. Manzano a couple of places in front of him in about uh, seventh at the moment. They come round the top bend and uh, the pace is still healthy. He went through 800 metres in 152.66, the main pack then, and about 153, 153 and a half. So it's solid, if not lightning quick. Yeah, it was, they were looking for 151, it's slightly down on that, but Kronji, the South African, has now gone, so we're down to the race itself, and it's Cho Gay and it's Kiprop, the two principals there. Uh, Gebra Medin, I'm just looking for him as well in that race. But certainly Choge is trying to push it along in those uh, with just about 300 metres to go. But Kiprop is pretty quick over the 800 metres. He's got basic speed. And this is going to be a cracking last 300. Choge then from Kiprop. He likes to go from a long way out. Kiprop seems to have got his tactics right at the moment. He's a tall, lanky figure. And he just eases past Kiprop there without any discernible acceleration and or discernible effort has a two metre lead Choge going with him now the rest of them trying to chase hard as they come round the bend Schlangen there back in about eighth place breathing down the neck and so is Manzano in the pack there it's Kiprop from Choge in third place Kiprop made it Manzano coming through strongly now coleman has got some work to do he's going backwards Tom Langshaw having a good run but it's going to be Kiprop from Manzano who runs second there and a uh, close second misjudges it eases past Choge but finishes by far the most strong of those uh, leading half dozen or so. Kiprop takes it then, 3.32.18 to be confirmed. It's a solid run from Kiprop, but it could have been so much quicker. And I'll tell you what, for Lionel Manzano, there's plenty more in the tank. The American seems to be getting better and better with each race. He'll run a big personal best there, Will Manzano. My notes, I've scribbled beside Manzano's name, watch him. And boy, did he need watching, but he could have taken that one if he'd been a little bit more confident, a little bit closer to the front with 200 to run. The, tri the triple jump, Capello of Cuba. Oh, that's beyond 17 meters for Capello. Now then, we've got Olsen, Christian Olsen, Alex Capello, 
The Giralt is there, Tamgo is there, Teddy Tamgo, who had that marvellous uh, world indoor record in Doha early on this year. Just a little bit left on the board there for Capello. Good middle phase, double arm shift, good control, holds the position well, and there's a nice little leg shoot at the end. Which will give him a little bit more. Now then, what's that? It's certainly over 17 metres, that's for sure. First event, first to jump for Christian Olsen. Incidentally, that jump was 17-12, Capello. Now that's going to be about the same for Olsen. Now then, Capello leading. Absolutely on the board. Missed the European Championships. Didn't want to make the injury that he'd got worse. It wasn't quite ready. The Championships came a little bit too early. A lovely hang at the end, isn't he, on that the jump? And that, 17 metres and 17 as we go across to Blanca Vlasic. 204. Now, the significance of the height is that it's the meeting record equal the meeting record step, set by Stefka Kostadinova, the world record holder. She set that world record, what, in, back in 1987. So that's the reason she's gone to 204, to try and match the world record holder's meeting record. I'm a little surprised she only wants to match it, frankly. Here she goes. Second attempt, third attempt, in fact. No. Rather a tired looking effort there from Vlasic, I think. Perhaps look forward to the son of her home nation, which she hopes will welcome her back next week. Zagreb on Wednesday, split the following weekend. And uh, this might be goodbye to Northern Europe for the uh, massively talented, massive in stature. World number one, who tonight has confirmed her status as a Diamond League champion in no uncertain terms. She's applauding the crowd, and that's lovely because they support her week after week. She's a prolific competitor. Stuart and I, I think, have been critical of her in the past as perhaps competing too much, but she usually bounces back. She might have one or two poor comps, and then she finds her form again. So, the triple jump, this is Benjamin... Uh, um, he's got 1696 in the first round. Um, no jump in the second. Olsen leads with 1717. We saw that jump. Capello second with 1712. And Giralt at the moment is in third place with 1710. Now then, what can uh, Campoore do in this third round? World Junior Champion in 2006, just to give you one a, a statistic of him. Actually, the previous World Junior Champion was Teddy Tamgo himself, so the French have done pretty well in that competition. Was fifth in the European Championships. Crowd getting involved all the way. No, no, no. no. Oh, I think the ankle's gone there, Stu. Yep, didn't look good, did it? Didn't look good at all. When you think about the force these athletes put through the ankles. Oh, he slips, I think. The plasticine there. It's a quite a high ridge of plasticine there, which is... Maybe, see, he's still putting weight in the foot, maybe he just strained something in the foot there, rather than actually gone over on the ankle. One attempt left for Campore. Well, there is the confirmation of the result of the high jump. Vlasic, two metres. De Martina, 198. And Emma Gren, 198 in third place. Well, the next event on the track is the women's 100 meter hurdles and there, oh, there's the result of the 1500 first. Uh, Kiprop from Manzano and Choge as we gave it. Season's best and personal best for the our first two. And that's how the rest fared in this race. Big field, spread out early and it really went very much with the script. Yes, personal best there for Tom Lancashire. That's good progress for the Britain under 334 for the first time. 
There's the lineup for the 100 meter hurdles for women. Damien and Belgium right on the inside. A Rock of Ireland in two. Felician Canada three. Jones USA four. Pearson Australia five. Lopez Sleep Canada six. Harrison USA seven. Carruthers USA eight. Vukasevic Norway in lane nine. The Belgian 13.12, semi finalist in the European Championships. This will be a tough one and learning experience, I would think. The former world indoor champion, Dervla Rocks, good to see her back. Fourth in the World Championships last year, silver medalist again in the European Championships just uh, recently, in Barcelona. Padita Felicien, the world champion in Paris in 2003. She got the silver again in Osaka in 2007. Lolo Jones, twice world indoor champion, terrific starter. We often mention the Olympic uh, problem. She should have won that, she knows it, but things happen, she says. The Olympic silver medalist, Sally Pearson, going very well. She holds the Oceanian record, 12.57 this season. Second in London, very confident young woman. Well, Priscilla Lopes Sleep of Canada. Dominant force as the season nears its end. 12.52 at best, world silver medalist last year, Olympic bronze medalist. One in Zurich, one in Berlin. That was a non Diamond League meet, of course, but she's so powerful. Queen Harrison, then, American collegiate champion in the 100 hurdles and 400 meter hurdles, incidentally, this year. Danielle Carruthers of the United States, unlucky not to get to the Olympics in 2004, missed the team by a hundredth of a second, she's drawn in the eighth lane. And Kristina Vukasevic of Norway, the European under-23 champion last year, a nervous look on that face, right on the outside, in the fourth though in the European Championships. So... Dabin, O'Rourke, Felician, Jones, Pearson, Lopes Schleep, Harrison, Carruthers, Vukasevic. The women's 100 meter hurdles. Jones on the right, Pearson in the middle, Lopes Schleep on the left. This Pearson got a terrific start. She's away from this field at the moment, and Lopeschleep's got a lot of work to do. Uh, Carruthers, uh, Harrison going well at the moment. Here comes uh, Lopeschleep. Lopeschleep's going to take it. She gets it. In second place is the Australian Pearson, and that was 12.54, and she continues that dominant uh, force, doesn't she? Lopeschleep again, a brilliant, brilliant run. And, uh, well, Pearson got the start. She certainly did. Brilliant stuff. Lola Jones ended up in fifth place. Well, back to this uh, triple jump. And of course, only four rounds. Not so much room for error. Oh, no, that's a, a big no jump, surely, that. Capello. 17-12 is opener. No jump in the second round, and yes, a no jump in the third round there. He's annoyed with himself too, but it was pretty a hefty no jump. Look, four or five centimetres into the plasticine. Bit Kamaki in the javelin. This uh, competition really lighting up at the moment with uh, Torkelson, 89 metres and 88. And uh, Pit Kamaki in second place with 82 metres and 41. And that uh, fourth round throw really wallops that. He's got a very fast arm. His timing's been out this season, I have to say that. And that's just 80. Christian Olsen then, 17 17 is opener. So disappointing that he couldn't compete in Barcelona and many think it a little bizarre he could compete a few days later in Stockholm no, but that's not right either and uh, Olsen will stay uh, in the lead with that 17-17 but it's a slender lead Capello 17-12 in second Giralt 17-10 in third the trouble is that's the final jump of uh, or the penultimate jump of the third round, Teddy Tamgo. 
has to take his third effort. Well, here's the man, the double Olympic champion. 89 meters and 88, his best thus far. And you have to say that Torkelson has uh, deserved his win in this Diamond League series, he really has. He's the true championship performer, that won't count of course, but he's the championship performer. When it matters, he prevails, he's proved it in a couple of Olympic games, he really has. He's 22 points already going into this, with Pitkamaki on 9, so um, his performance... Uh, they said the athletes had to come here with an honest performance if they'd already won, well they did. Chance to look at that 100 meter hurdles once again. And I have to say, Lolo Jones got a terrible start. She virtually stood up out of the blocks. Sally Pearson had it to begin with, but uh, Lopez Schleep, so powerful in the purple there. The Canadian, very, very strong through the second half. Sally Pearson normally is too. That was a great battle between those two. Well, here's Teddy Tamgo, needs something big. We know he's capable. If he can just hit this board properly and hold himself, that's a good 17 meter jump. Now, that could challenge the lead, actually. We've not seen the, 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 the fine performances from this fella that we saw in New York with that two centimetres shy of uh, 18 metres. He's got the talent, he really does flow, doesn't he? Now then, what's, what's he got there? He's way down the field at the moment, in fifth place. Oh, he's oh, gone into the lead, 17-33. It looked as though it was better than Olsen's jump, and so it proved to be. There's much more in the tank from this fella, having said what I've said. Well, here's that uh, shot of Pearson again. Lolo Jones is way, way back and out of it. Real clash between these two, and what a race they made of it. 12.54 to 12.64, Lopez leap over Pearson. And Felicien, to a credit, wasn't far behind. 12.68 in third place. But yeah, what a season she's had, Lopez Schleep. The Diamond League format rewards the most consistent athlete of the summer. Well, there's the result, 12.54, Pearson 12.64, and uh, Perdita Felician got third place with 12.68. Well, there are the final results, 22 points to 10, to 14 rather, Lola Jones, despite coming fifth there in second place with 14, just ahead of Sally Pearson. Well, darkness has uh, consumed the sky now. And the final middle distance event of the evening is going to be followed by the women's 5,000. Well, the men's 800 metres, Rainer, Mateo, Solomon, Som, Kivuva and Lelang. And let's wait for this uh, second page. Akaki, Lewandowski, the European champion, and David Rudisha, the new world record holder. Rainer and Mutai, the Spaniard and the Kenyan, drawn on the inside. Rainer, he's now 29, pr much promise early on in his career, didn't quite prevail that. But Moutour, the world junior champion this year, he's only 18. Solomon, of uh, the United States, 145-23 is best. He's also sharing a lane with Bram Som, former European champion, didn't uh, get to the European Championships, he was ill. Kivuva, third in the African Championships this year, he's in good form too, world, world finalist. Lost a shoe in that race, so that uh, proved difficult for him. Alang, the world indoor silver medalist this year, he's only 21, was second in the race behind uh, Rudisha. Ali, Bahrain, world and Olympic finalist at 1500. Then, there is a man with his name upside down, Mr. Kaki. <laughs> Ababaki Kaki, twice the world indoor champion. His race Rhodesia once before in Oslo, and it was very, very quick indeed. He's a real talent. The European champion, Lewandowski of Poland. He's got a lot of confidence coming out of that championship. 144.30 this season. But he's a good comp competitor, and here is the man of the moment. He took the figures uh, of Wilson Kipkater at 141.11 to 141.09 in Berlin just recently, last week, in terrific form. 
And it's uh, Tangui, his uh, training partner. He lives alongside him, trains with him, and paces him. They know each other so well, and he's been asked to provide 49 and a half to 50 for 400 meters. This is not necessarily about records, this race. This is a race that wasn't, Rhodesia wasn't going to do if he hadn't broken the world record in Berlin. He was going, then going on um, to another meeting in Rieti to attempt it again and not come here. But has he got the record? He said he'd come here and face Kaki, a different context, a race this time. But Rhodesia, tall, elegant, twice the African champion and now the world record holder. Not sure what happened there, but the starter, all the athletes surprised, turned round. They got to their marks before the order, which is a little bizarre. <laughs> now then, let's see how this race develops. Um, it'll be a good one. Promised much, certainly. Kaki's gone off pretty quickly down the back straight. Kaki, who is. Uh, when we saw him in the World Indoor Championships a couple of so seasons ago, he did it from the front. Le Lang has gone into the lead. Now Radisha is moving through on the outside and takes over the lead. And his pacemaker then takes over. Santu, Tangui and Radisha, these two in the lead. Kaki in third place. As they come round the top bend into the straight. It's Ali, in fact, in second place. Radisha has a little look, says who is there. He's trapped on the inside. Kaki's in fourth place in the race. La Lang is there, Kavuna is there as well. And let's have a look at the time for the 400 meters. Oh gosh, it's 49.23, it's very, very quick indeed. Now Ali's really taking it on, and I just wonder whether Kaki, where he will play his part. radisha has gone, the pacemaking's gone, Radisha's there, Kaki, Ali in, uh, Kaki in second place, Lang in third place, Lewandowski in fourth place. Ali's now dropping back in the field. What a race. 49-2 at 400 metres, Rudisha looks so relaxed, doesn't he? I think he's trying to slow this one down a bit, look at the way they're punching. Yeah, he said he was going to make a race of it, this wasn't about records, we understand that. But this is going to be a real good last 150 metres, he will want to win the race, most definitely. Now what's he got? Kaki versus Rudisha. It was 1-0 to Rudisha this season and here he comes away from this field. What an athlete this is. Radisha coming away to take this, Kaki closing a little bit in the final stages, but what a run indeed, with Lelang coming into third place, 143.51, and that job done. It was, it said, they said, don't, don't talk about records, he wouldn't have come to Brussels, this is different when you're racing Kaki, he knows that Kaki's good, he knows that Kaki can run 142 and perhaps under 142, he's a young man who's proved himself in the past, and uh, but Rhodesia looks a class alone, doesn't he? Well, back to this uh, pole vault competition. The bar is at uh, 5 metres 85. Maltimore has two failures at that height. Needs this. He will take the lead if he clears this. And he gets it. Oh, my word. What a clearance. And that snatches the lead from the Frenchman, Renaud Lavillani, who was the only athlete clear at 580. The other three athletes in the competition all passing at that height. Actually, Hook had one attempt and then passed any more attempts once La Villani went over. But with that third time clearance, Moore takes the lead to German. That's a new personal best for him. La Villani in second place is passing at this height, means he's got to go up 590 the next, next bar height. And Maturik has two failures as well. He's in third place, the, the uh, Ukrainian. He's got uh, one attempt left. And in fact, Steve Hooker with one failure at 580, then he passed, two failures at 585, out of the competition, and uh, shares fifth place with Derek Miles. So, Hooker again, not a great night by his standards. Well, back to the javelin, and this is the fifth round throw of uh, Tiero Pitkamaki. Our talkers and fourth, of course, was a no throw, but this fella is trying desperately to get his form back. <laughs> Former world champion, he has the talent. He says he was working on the elevation of uh, the throw. It hasn't quite worked for him. He won the world title in Osaka. He got bronze in uh, Beijing in the Olympic Games. 
and he's a 90 meter plus thrower at his best his personal best 91 meters 53 so he knows he's had that distance before it's not going to impact on the lead though is it well we can go back to this pole vault here's Matsurik as I said he's in third place at the moment third and final attempt at 585 for Matsurik former world junior champion silver medalist at those European championships but out he goes there and his best effort of the night was his uh, third time clearance third attempt and a clearance at 575 not a bad night's work but he's frustrated nonetheless. He is confirmed as a third placer. Renault Lavillani, by the way, is confirmed as champion as well. Here's that 800 metres. Look at Kaki, the head rolling from side to side there in second place. I really feel as though uh, Rudisha here tonight has done just enough. He hardly broke sweat. There were very few signs of strain. 1.43.51 his time. Remember, that's two and a half seconds outside his world record from uh, just a few days ago. And uh, he, that looked very, very comfortable. He goes to Rieti tomorrow. He competes there on Sunday at that very quick Italian track. There is the result, uh, Radisha's time confirmed at 1.43.50, Kaki 1.43.84, Lalang 1.44.29, European champion coming through into fourth place, 1.44.97, another good run from him. There's the rest, Rainer Solomon Ali, who did so much of the early work, faded in the end, Ransom, and the pacemaker who failed to finish, of course. Well, just one event left on the track and it is the women's 5,000 meters 12 and a half laps of the track and fittingly here at this a wonderful arena which has seen so many quick races over this sort of distance in the past it's an incredibly high quality field I can tell you that Lynette Masai is the world 10,000 meter champion Cheriot a compatriot the world 5,000 meter champion Bekele of Turkey the newly crowned European 5,000 meters champion the European champion over 10,000 Abel Gese of Turkey is also there she and Bekele both uh, former Ethiopians. Well, Vivian Cheriot, world champion last year over 5,000 metres for the last lap of 58.6, turning the tables on the Ethiopian. She's in wonderful form. She's only lost to Dibaba and the Mesolet Defar this year. There's a Bekele Alamitu Bekele. Second in Stockholm a couple of weeks ago, European indoor champion last year over 3,000 metres. Abela Gese, her Turkish compatriot, going for the European record, we understand tonight. And Ajigu, Santiago Ajigu, she is the Diamond League leader with 13 points. But uh, close on her heels with the 10 points is Vivian Chariot. De Grande, Lindsay De Grande of uh, Belgium will be the first pacemaker. She's due to take them out to 1,500 metres in 4.18, we understand. That's about 66 seconds per lap pace. Actually, what am I saying? Excuse me, it's about 68 seconds per lap pace. It's a little mental rejig. But uh, Marisho Mohamed of Tanzania will be the second pace maker, and then Muriuki of Kenya, hoping to take him through to 3,000 meters in 8.38. It will be fast. Conditions good for distance running. There's not much breeze in the arena. It's cool. It's probably about 14 degrees, but that's actually good for distance running. Expect this one to be fast if the pacemakers set it up well to 3,000. That's a De Grand who leads. Ejigu in fourth place. Vivian Chariot back there in about six at the moment with the ponytail flapping from side to side. But the pack don't seem too, seem too keen to go with it at the moment, do they? There's a water about an eight meter gap already just looking there that's uh El Carmo, in fact on the inside in fourth place the three pacemakers have gone away and there's about a 20 meter gap after uh, what 250 meters and that's a great shame clearly the main pack have decided with so many leading lights in there if you can have several leading lights then uh, they're not going to make it quick it's going to be a cat and mouse game because the gap is 25 metres now back to the main pack. Although it's Abela Gessi who takes up the running from the second group behind these three pacemakers. Well, the first lap there, about 70 for the pacemakers. Abela Gessi, about 74, 74 and a half goes through. You can see the uh, 
chasm between that leading trio. All of the pacemakers, remember, and it does seem a little bit of a waste of time if the pack aren't going to go with it. And Abela Gesse, well, she's the athlete who wanted a very quick time here tonight. She is the European 10,000 metres champion, remember, from Barcelona. Well, Alex Capello, the fourth round of the triple jump now. 17-12, this is the final round, incidentally, is best so far. Oh, and that looks better. Now that, it's got the white flag, oh, look at that. That's as close as you get. And that's a terrific, oh, he's gone into the lead, 17-47. And that's a brilliant jump. On the night it is. Christian Olsen. His final jump then. 17.47 to beat. Oh, that looks good as well now, is it as far? Hits the board well. 17.40. Oh, no, that's 17.35. It's not as far. It's not as far. And so he stays in third place. Tamgo then. Capello's distance to challenge. Oh, that is big. Now that may well have done it. There's a little bit to give on there. He thinks he's done it. And he has done it. 17.52. Tamgo, Capello and Olsen. They're the first three. Well, they're coming up to the first 1,000 meters there. 2.55. 22. It's nowhere near quick enough for that European record. A Baltimore in the pole vault now. Well, that's a second attempt at 5 meters 90. He's going well, isn't he? Third attempt clearance at uh, 5.85. Avilene has had one failure at this height. The man who dominates the event this season. It's a very, very, he opened the competition with a very, very confident uh, jump, did uh, Baltimore. World indoor silver medalist, just to remind you. Didn't do very well in the World Championships last year. He was 14, so he's come on a lot over the last winter. And then didn't qualify in the European Championships, so in different form. Well, Elvan Abel, I guess they're leading that long pack to the right of picture in fourth place. Trying to gradually reel in those pacemakers, but 255 for the pacemakers at one kilometre. Abel, I guess they leading the pack through about three seconds down. It's nowhere near quick enough. So the pacemakers are going through are De Grand and the binder Marisha Mohammed. And then in the third place, Buriuki, who's gradually being reeled in now. But Abel, Gesse leads them through with nine laps to run. That's the main pack. Belkamu back in the pack, two or three places behind her. Ajigu, Bekele, Cheriot, they're all there. But uh, it's not quick as things stand. Renault, Lavilline then. Oh, he worked so hard on that, didn't he? He wasn't correct. When he planted, it wasn't right, but he didn't give it up. I just wonder what Pitka Marki can do now with his final throw. In second place, as so often is the case. Oh no, he's walked over the line. Didn't like that at all, and there's why. I just wonder whether Andreas Torkelsen will take his uh, final throw. And there's the series, 83-36. Second place, the Zordo in third. Well, they're gradually reeling in that uh, pacemaker, Marisha Mohammed now leading the main group. There is the uh, second or the final of the pacemakers, Muriuki of uh, Kenya, who's supposed to get to 3,838, but uh, eight laps gone. When they get to the top of the back straight, they'll have 2,000 meters done. But you can see how close they are together. Huddle of the uh, USA there, back in about sixth or seventh place at the moment. Molly Huddle, who was a second in the US Championship. She's a 14.51 athlete this year. She's broached new ground and done it well as the 25-year-old, but giving a good account of herself with Milkamu up alongside her down the back straight. And uh, they're almost up to British or Mohammed. They go through 2,000 pieces in 5.54. That's a 2.58. It's even slower than the first kilometre. What a shame. 
But Abela Gessi, well, she's not scared of front running Abela Gessi. She finds herself in second place with a Jigu and Melkamu behind her. Chariot is there as well. Beckerley, all the big names are queuing up behind her. Well, Baltimore then, a third and final at 5 metres 90, needs this. Oh, it was so close. That was close. I thought he'd got it, I really did. But he's gone. And those uh, worrying, wondering what happened to uh, uh, Steve Hooker, he went out uh, at 5.85. On his, uh, he had two attempts at 5.85 today. That was so close, wasn't it? Two attempts and two failures at 5.85. His previous attempt at a failure at 5.80 meant the three in a row, so he went out and ended up in uh, fifth place. But he's uh, the leader thus far, but... Let's see what uh, La Villigny will do. Right at the back of this 5,000 metre field to write a picture there, you can see step 12. She's talking to her yesterday, she thought sub-15 minutes would be tough, but the youngster who was a seventh in the European Championships over 1,500 metres, the Briton, going well at the moment and benefiting from a good steady pace in this pack rather than lightning fast pace. We're in third kilometre at the moment. That's uh, still a bail against a chasing uh, Muriuki now, that final of the last of the pacemakers and I suspect once she drops out the male against they might start pushing on six laps to go 70 second lap there it really isn't quick enough well this is an important vault for La Villene he needs to clear this or he's going to stay in second place because uh, Moore had a third time clearance at 585 and La Villene did take it oh he looked close as well but he's beaten on the night He's gone, a 5.80 first clearance, whereas Moore had a third attempt clearance at 5.85. So, Germany over France on this occasion, but uh, La Villigny is the diamond uh, season winner, that's for sure. He knows he could have done that. In fact, both of them looked so close on that last attempt. Well, the five fastest women in the world this year are in this field, and that's why it's been relatively slow so far. They're watching each other. Nobody prepared to commit and really go for it. And in the absence of Defar and Nibaba, the top two in the world over the last four or five years, you think they might have taken the opportunity tonight to do something that makes people uh, look up. But no, they come to 3,000 metres now, and it's 8.51. The target was 8.38. That's why I'm criticising the tempo of this race through the first uh, two and a half, three kilometres. And forget about the European record there. Muriyuki, the pacemaker, has dropped out at 3,000, but she didn't do too bad a job. They just weren't prepared to go with it, were they? So now it's Abela Gessé leading down the back straight. They're queuing up in single file behind her, and I've just got a feeling she might start winding it up there, cranking it up. Chariot in third place. Chinonge moving down the outside there. Abela Gessé certainly had the strength of character and the ability to make these last uh, four and a half laps very, very tough for that field, and she'll need to. There's some big kickers there. Chariot amongst them. Lynette Masai, remember, has all the strength you could require. She's the tall figure in fourth place. So as they come into the straight, it's a Bela Gese leading from Ijigu. She's the Diamond League leader, remember, Ijigu, with uh, 13 points. In second place is Chariot with 10 points. Now, first place in the Diamond League, these Diamond League finals gets eight points. Second place gets just four points. So. Chariot, for example, could certainly leapfrog Ejigu here just by finishing in first place with the Ethiopian current leader in second place. But it is single file, and I'd rather fancy Abele Gassi is trying to make each of these laps count. I think she should. She is a strong athlete rather than lightning quick. I know she's a sub four minute 1500 meter performer. That doesn't necessarily mean, though, that she's got lightning quick last uh, two or 300 meters. Chariot looks comfortable. So does Masai there. But Kelly on the outside, she looks fine. And Jigo on the inside in green, she looks good too. There's nobody really yet being stressed by this. Steph 12 there, to the right to picture. Still hanging in there in about 10th place. She's having a good run here. Just uh, on the shoulder of Molly Huddle in what, about 10th uh, and 11th places, the American and the Briton. And as it happens, while it's relatively slow paced for these uh, top Africans who have taken world titles, um, uh, 
plenty of them between them. It's ideal for uh, optimum running for Huddle and uh, Step 12. But as I say that, with three laps to go, so Abela Gessi gets her head down. The cadence has definitely picked up. And uh, they're just beginning to drop back now at 12 and Huddle. They've got to run hard these last three laps. It's Abela Gessi from Ijigu who's just shadowing her every stride here through these, uh, this second half of this race. Chetty up there in third. Masai, the tall, tall figure there. Lovely, majestic, raking stride. She's got the Kenyan Olymp the Kenyan 10,000 metre champion from Berlin last year. Still only 20 years old in that Masai, but an experienced racer now. Third in the African Championships in front of the home crowd two or three weeks back. 4,000 metres, 11.49. That was only a 2.57. They haven't really done anything, and I'm a little surprised, in fact, when I say they. I mean, Abele Gessi hasn't really done anything to uh, ask questions of many of this field. Huddle at 12, just beginning to struggle there. 12 more than the American. But as they come into the straight, they'll see two laps to go. It is the European champion, Abele Gessi, from uh, Ejigu the World Indoor Championship bronze medalist over 3,000 metres. She was fourth last year at the World Championships over 5,000 metres at Jigu. And as I say that, so Chariot for the first time moves up onto the shoulder of Jigu. They're bunching. Abela Gessi, little glance over her shoulder there, but she leads from Chariot and Jigu. Masai still there in fourth place on the outside. Beckerle is there back in about fifth or sixth at the moment. And just a little bit of jostling for position here, as they know somebody will wind it up. But when? How soon? Will they really leave it till after the bell? Chariot takes the lead. Huddle goes through with 600 metres to run in around 13.02. She's going to have a good run. So is Steph 12. Both of them surely capable of breaking 15 minutes here tonight. And they come round the bend into the straight for the penultimate time. And now they're gathering themselves. They're still there. Chariot, the very fast finisher. The world champion of 5,000 metres for Kenya. On her shoulder, the Diamond League leader, Ajigu. It's Chariot from Ajigu, from Masai. Abena Gessé is not finished. She's in fourth place. And these four just begin to get away from Bekele in fifth. And Kipiego in sixth. Melkamu having a bad one. She's back in about seventh place. 300 meters to run and into the back straight. And it's Chariot now. Just that rolling style of hers. The blocks emphasize it even more. The little head rocking from side to side. Ajigu, much smoother look runner. Masai, has she got the legs? These three away. Beckley, I think that is up in the fourth place, but there's about four meters between her and that leading trio. And Ajigu gathering herself. Chariot, second in the Diamond League with 10 points. Ajigu, first in the Diamond League with 13 points. This for $40,000, the 100 metres to go. And Chariot eases away. And this will mean reversing her positions. She's going to be Diamond League champion in the women's 5,000 metres. Masai desperately trying to get past Ajigu. She does do it, I think, there at the line. The winning time, 14.34. Bekele fourth. The rest of them crashing across the line. Kipiego and Bekele and uh, Abelagese, rather, and disappointed fifth or sixth there and Huddle in 12. Huddle goes through the line there in about 14.45. Uh, 12 goes through in 14.53, 14.54. That's a wonderful run from step 12. Still we mustn't forget uh, just a youngster at 21 years old and that's uh, a good race in depth even if the winning time at 14.34 wasn't anywhere near as fast as we expected. Some great racing there and yet again Vivian Chariot as the beating of the best of the Ethiopians in this one in Brussels. Well, it certainly was a great uh, finish, Tim, as uh, we turned our attention away from those field events and have a little look at the final stages. Chariot going into this race um, was down on uh, points in indeed, and uh, she had, uh, what, 10 points. Uh, Ejigu had 13, and it's double points for this uh, particular uh, final. So Chariot will have got uh, 18. And we'll wait and see what happened where Ejigu was, whether she was second or third. But uh... Well, just looking at the uh, screen, Ejigu got third place. So she ends up with uh, 13 points. 
Chariot, though, surely with that uh, run tonight, becomes Diamond League champion. She had uh, 10 points, she was in second place. And therefore should end up with 18 points. The computer yet to confirm that here in, in front of us, but they will get it sorted out. Yeah, she's won it all right. And uh, that was a very fine uh, com competition in the end. It was not about uh, records, that one, despite the early pacemaking. And it was absolutely clear that uh, this was a race, wasn't it? I can tell you, the Molly Huddle in 10th uh, place, a US record indeed, an area record of 1444.76. That's a continental record. And Steph, 12, 1454.08. Huge new personal best for the Britain. Andreas uh, Torkelson, the uh, javelin. It's uh, a look back at the second round uh, throw of his, and I'm not surprised we're looking back at it because look at that, that's the 90 meter line. And we reported earlier that uh, that distance, 89 88, and that was just a brief glimpse and look back at it. Bitkamaki, 83 36, and Desordo, 82 39. That's how they finished. So Andreas Torkelson once again dominating. Uh, the season of javelin throw. Vivian Chariot then 14.34.13. Good enough for victory over Masai. And Jigu in third place with Bekele, the uh, Turkish European champion at 5,000, in fourth place. A new personal best for her. Good running down the field. An area record for the American Molly Huddle. And uh, step 12 broaching new ground as well, the young Brit. Well, the lights go out in this uh, stadium for the presentations of the Diamond League season comes to a, an end for 2010. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present the winners of the second zone Diamond League events in Brussels 2010. Lamine Dia is there. Cuba, Yanis, A quick look at the winners for you. Barrios of Cuba in the discus. Lasic in the high jump. Winners coming forward collecting their diamond trophies. The season has been successful. There's Alison Felix taking up her position, winner of the 400 and the 200 meters overall. These two seasons. Tim, it's been a, a wonderful season, hasn't it, as we see these uh, athletes come forward to collect their trophies. Yes, it has, Stuart. I think the Diamond League concept, for the most part, has worked. Of course, uh, there are critics out there, but uh, the, the concept is right. Let's put a, out a format that decides the most consistent athlete through the season. And to come out on top, you don't have to be just consistent, but you do have to record a load of victories as well. Great performances. Lopez Sleep really does typify that. She's had some wins and some losses, but some great wins through the second half of the summer to rack up the points. Yeah, the 800 Chet Koskai, really great run by her. There's the big... Uh, Cantwell, is that podium strong enough? A huge man, huge man as Felix looks around and says, what's the shadow behind me? <laughs> I think the strength of this uh, discipline, Stuart, is that you can tell who is the best athlete in between Olympic Games each summer, which was always a bit of a quandary. La Villeneuve is there, the Sean Jackson is there, Torkelson, there's Torkelson, the javelin champion. <laughs> Huge crowd celebrating these uh, marvellous performances. And the man of the moment, David Rudisha, will come up and collect uh, his uh, trophy. 16 in Zurich, 16 here. Tyson Gay celebrates his victory overall. 
There's Kip Rock, the winner of the 1500 metres, the Olympic champion in the background. There's David Rudisha. Wonderful, wonderful season. And these are the champions of the Diamond League. I mean, Diak, the president of the international governing body, joins them after making the presentation. Wonderful scenes here. Well, there are the winners listed for you. Tamgo, that triple jump eventually winning that. Gay, Rudisha, Alice and Felix, Chariot, Lope Schlieff, Sabinia, the triple jump. We didn't see too much of that here tonight, but a marvellous, marvellous array of athletes. Look forward to Doha, May the 6th, 2011. It's been a great night here in Brussels at this marvellous stadium. And so from Tim Hutchins and myself, Stuart Storey, goodbye. <laughs>